Okay, that'll take four hours, so we'll go ahead and do that. Gods keep you. I found the egg. Okay, Hylia's feathered pits. <laughs> she claps her hands together, wincing at the pain. How'd you manage that? I found the nest you spoke of. I mm, hope those worms didn't give you too much trouble. Let's see her then. Red of the lake. Amazing. Not a single crack. She runs her bandaged hand across the shell. You've lost an item. Dragon egg. Uh, sh Okay. Uh, she hefts the egg into the back of her wagon and, rum and rummages among the shells. Uh, here, take this. She drops a, sa a stack of coins and parcel of ingredients into your hands. Everything you need to brew a good... Uh, um, uh, to a brew a good strong pick me up should come in handy with the kind of scrapes you seem to get into and come see me anytime you need potions or ingredients all right I got a special prize for friends she winks oh really nice all right farewell on that part I suppose ask complete sweet let's uh oh Um, do, 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 expires in one day, 24 hours, of miles north of Kendall Keep, uh, so small that it's often missed on the maps and the tax records. The village has little contact with the rest of the, uh, deer, on Deerwood. Despite its tiny size, the village has a long history dating back to its use as a Glanfathen tribal camp over three. Uh, that's, that's done in three days. Over three centuries ago, one of the most prominent features of the community is a deep well that uh, the top of which is made with Anguith and Ardra, though not any other religious significance to the Glanfathans. All, all who see it agree that the well is truly ancient. In recent years, locals have reported strange sounds. Yeah, let's go, yeah. And also, go ahead and make ourselves a rest here. And possibly buy some uh, fire, some camp supplies. Good day, stranger. All right, let's get the food and drinks. That's for certain. Oh, that's for two rest. Plus one might, plus two constitution. Oh, that's not bad. Last for two, uh, two rest. Plus two dex, plus six damage. Reduction burn. Sure. Oh, two might, two con, two intellect. Yes. Boom. Alright, so with that uh done with, let's head up head over to the keep so we can So we're essentially managing time properly. Now I don't know if I like this cipher or not. Feels weird. She feels like she wants to be a melee uh a melee maid? But at the same time, but at the same time, it feels like it's trying to be 
Uh, I don't know. This cipher is definitely interesting. You know what? Let's let let let's actually come over here and uh, level up our level level up the grieving mother. Or re uh, retrain the grieving mother and, and take a look at her skills. Hail Quick traveler. save. Uh, food and drinks. Recruit. Retrain character. Grieving mother. Books, um, retaliatory strike, stunning an enemy whenever they target the cipher's will defense. Huh. Interesting. I know she had ended up getting greater focus, so we'll just go with that. I do like that. Make it a little hard for enemies to fight, though. Okay, foe targets. Ooh, okay. And there's mine blades. Hmm. Okay. Uh, drains 10 resolve for 25, um, for plus 5, 25 deflection. Uh huh. I think I'll take that instead. So I do kind of like that. Okay, so what is draining whip? Mo uh, modify soul whip. Uh, plus 33% focus gained. Uh, uh, self plus 20% melee damage plus 20% Ranged. You know what? I like that. We get two new spells. Okay, so Soul Ignition. Target under 39.9 burn damage. Secret horrors. Area of effect, bow target. Plus, okay, then it affects foe, AOE. Kind of like that. Jeez. Pale Link seems pretty good. And six.
Okay, soul bites deeper, granting a bonus to damage. Um, I gotta figure out what the hell soul whip is. Should have been actually been looking at that before I did all this stuff. Whoops. Uh, let's see what Soul Whip is real quick. Soul Shock, Soul Wave, Ice Strike, Combined Phantom Pose. Maybe it's in here. Soul Whip. Uh, causes the Cypher's weapons to generate a field of uh, parasitic energy that lashes out at the target, increasing damage inflicting, inflicted and generating focus for the Cypher. Oh. Interesting. Um, oh, what did I want? Did I want? I wanted that one, right? Okay, so I suppose we'll go ahead and grab you. And here. And that's just allied target, foe target. Mind Lance. Okay, for target. Uh, 38 to 55 raw damage, stunned for 11 seconds. Bow AoE, 31 to 44 raw damage. Oh, okay. And there's Wild Leech, target. Uh, 10 points stolen from a random attribute. For 21 seconds. Going in between. Um, affects ally target. Plus 25% of incoming crits converted to hits. Plus 25% of incoming hits converted to grazes. Plus 25% incoming grazes converted to misses. Plus 3 move speed for 43.5 seconds. Yeah. That's... Interesting. I think we'll start with that. And I think I'll go with this. Oh, what am I doing? I should have actually... Oh, well. targeted stun okay revokes a retaliatory strike stunning an enemy whenever they target the cypher's will defense interesting
Yeah, I suppose we can just I suppose we can do summers on her. Suppose that doesn't suppose that wouldn't hurt. Uh done. And I think I'm okay with that. Really? And let's see how well she does now. Your will, the watcher. But, um, incoming dialogue. Your mind comes bearing questions, Watcher. I had, yeah, I had a question for you. Let your mind speak for you. I shall listen to, uh, listen past the word. You addressed me as a Watcher when we, mm, you addressed me as a Watcher when we met. Do you know what a Watcher is? Mm, there's a slow chill, and for a moment it seems as if she's going to fade from your vision. As if she can't bear to be seen. The title came unbidden. I do not know why I spoke of it. Yet it seemed the right mantle. A familiar one. Yet I do not know from where it came if I have given offense. Oddly enough, it seems... Oddly enough, it seems like she's not speaking to you. It feels like she's speaking to an audience. The air takes on a curious edge. A chill which persists for a sharp moment then fades into a dull fear if i have given offense forgive me forgive me you you would know more than i why are you afraid i do not know it is an old feeling i do not know where it stems from it was a word that arose when you saw me it is said watchers see much uh, see much that others do not and I have been hidden from the eyes of others for for some time let me ask you something else uh, how is it no one can see you their eyes see but their minds will not remember past the call a uh, call? my face is like the call of a newborn hiding the face beneath and for my body I am able to wrap myself as a mother cradling her child. I am here, as you see me. But to them, their eyes see only the cloak that I wear. A peasant mother, dirty, shabby, not worth knowing. As a watcher, you see me than others. To the eyes of most, I am as unseen as the spirits you share memories with. How are you able to affect minds? I, I divert a flow of their senses down a path, mm, down a different path, to a place easily forgotten. It is not unwelcome when one does not desire the presence of others. The surface of their minds register a figure, but the memory slips away. They see a woman, but there is no desire for conversation, no desire for any questions, and I have none to ask. I want to discuss something different. Uh, when we first met, how was I able to enter your dream? I do not know. What what do you speak of? If you were in my thoughts, I could not feel your presence, nor do I know what you saw there. As she speaks, you suddenly feel an odd sensation in your mind, as if uh, walking in her thoughts would be as if waking walking down a back street of merchant stalls. The claustrophobia of wooden shelves and canvas tar uh, tarps had made less oppressive by the sheer number of entic enticing vials and bottles that stretch out to the sides of you. Okay, I'm getting the feel of this. Hmm. Oh, we might. Cheers, guys. For you guys' information, what I what I ended up doing was try to make things a little bit more uh, maneuverable for me, so I'm not just trying to reach all the way over there. I just have, and I especially one of the things I did, I ended up moving my mini fridge a little bit closer to me because it was against the wall over there, and I'm kind of like in the center of the room, sort of. Sort of, just like 
Boom. Anyways. <clears throat> uh, boom. You suddenly realize the whether she permits it or uh, whether she permits it or not, you could enter her dream and observe it without her ever knowing. In response, your hand twitches. There is the feeling that you could simply pick up a mm, pick up a vial, taste it, sample it, and keep the memory as your own. And suddenly, you find yourself back in her. Your present thoughts. That sounded weird. Uh, though you were away for or about a moment, she seems unaware of your diversion of thought. And maybe one of your gifts, an ability to walk in memories as easily as someone walks upon the ground. May I try it again? You feel her slowly nod, though she makes no motion. My mind is open to you as it was before when we met. I could not stop you if I wished. I do not seek to impose, I seek your permission. My memory is not as it was, much, as, much has been forgotten. If you would walk in my thoughts, I have nothing, I have nothing hidden. Her thoughts feel strangely apologetic and, and welcoming both at once. Perhaps you may learn something that will strengthen you or a clue to what has caused this terrible burning of the fields of souls and halted breaths wheel. When her mind gives away your passage uh, your passage almost unnoticed as you enter as her uh enter her giggity phrasing uh enter her before for it yeah, definitely phrasing circling the memory you shared when you first met phrasing chat and suddenly you are calm you are on a plateau almost the height of a tower several stories high the plateau is like a table lying beneath a clear sky and beneath the plateau surrounding it all directions a forest hazy with mist although whether it, whether it is actually mist or distance or recollection resting in the curve of a natural arc above you is a great copper bell half again the size of a man hanging at attention as if looking down on you and the event unfolding before you the plateau is, uh, has soaked in the sun and the rock beneath you is rough and warm the sky forms a cradle around you you feel different not disembodied but you feel your body your physical contours contours yeah contours I think that's right, contours, have changed along with the surroundings. And you hear a soft series of chimes like wind chimes. The sound, the scene gains color and texture as if, as if the sound is beckoning you you gently forth. Uh, any senses? Oh, did I already do this? Uh, the chime coaxes. Glistening, you can feel the skin in your wrist. Waving, not thread, but gathering tenderly, moving along in the first moments of breath's wheel. Your hands are wet. Your hands are upon the flesh of a newborn child. Yeah. We already did all this. Uh, with the efforts, the scene bleeds some color. Okay, she seems... I walked again into dreams, thoughts, and I believe your memories. A mixture of curiosity and fear wells up between you. She raises her left hand, the chiming of her wrists uh, quelling the rise within her. She is frightened, but curiosity anchors her. And what did you see in my memories? I would hear you speak of them. The dream, the memory I saw upon meeting you, it was you helping give birth to a child. Now, there is silence, and as your breath falls still, you hear the faint cry of a child in the distance, a newborn child, almost exactly like what you heard in the dream. As you listen, the grieving mother raises both her hands as if uh, weaving, her wrist chiming as she does so, in a semblance of the gentle turning she provided while the newborn was crowning. Uh, to, your, uh, to your surprise, you recognize the motions and the words from the memory, even as they are new to you. As she weaves her hands through the air in front of her, the child's cries grow still, yet the sound of the chimes weaves almost hypnotically into your thoughts. The sky seems sharp and clear, and you feel as if you are towering over your surroundings. 
as if kneeling atop a great pillar, just as she did in the memory. And to his surprise, the grieving mother falls as if her strings were cut and her knees crack hard against the ground. Her hands never cease moving in the air, the chimes echoing her movement. In a raged voice, you hear her speak. The voice is that of uh, that of a much older woman than the one before you. Harsh, almost desperate. Tell me what you saw. Show me what you saw. Where were you? We were in the middle of a clear forest, the strong wind tearing through it. She leans back, as if looking back at the sky, but her eyes are closed, the film building on them. The slow intake of breath, you feel time become quiet around you. Hmm, I do not feel the memory. I do not know if it was mine, but... Her hair falls across her features again like a veil, and she nods. Not with her chin, but with a push in her mind. But thank you for trying. I want to talk about the birth memory again. Uh, I hope you recall it. The, there's a silence, and as your breath falls still, you hear the faint cry. Okay. All right, just go still. You get to uh, memory. Cut. Red roads. A huge force, uh, hoarsely and ever fainter with the distance between you. Stone of the plateau. Its color. Tell me its color. Oh God. Hold on, hold on. Oh no! That's not good. Um, oh God, what was it? It was a silver Audra, a surface worn by the sun. As above the cl uh, she clasps them and then cuts them as if feeling them for the first time, and she stares down in the middle. And the chimes sound once, twice as they swing. And what did these hands hold? Um. I'm not sure. There was a child you were bringing forth in your hands, I don't recall. There's a sudden intake of breath and then a release. Her eyes blur closed, forming into slits, but in the brief glimpses you have her, have her changing expression. The rippling pain in her features seems to have smooth. She swallows once, twice, and then you feel her once again in your thoughts. The rasping husk of her voice swallowed and drawn within. It was the birthing bell you saw. Has it been so long? forgotten so much uh, with the words uh, with the words comes a river of impulses thoughts as if loosed from a breaking dam and as your mind wraps the impulses into words you realize it is her muscles and her hardened thoughts relaxing and breathing again there's such an intense intensity you almost want to step back from uh, from the flow, but you find the wave of impulses cause mm, impulses cause questions to float to the surface. Among them is a name. 
Watcher. This is so weird. Are we like having like an entire telepath? I think we're actually like having almost an entire telepathic communication here. When did this, when did this become the sixth cent? Thanks. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, what is the birth bell? It is a plateau formed of the spirit stone Audra. At its top is set a great bell cradled in the reaching arm of the plateau. It stirs in the wind, and it sounds for leagues when struck by kith hands. In distant times, the great bell served as a Glanfothan watchtower, perhaps. Why they abandoned it, I do not know. Other men came in time, settlers, and claimed the tower as their own. I, in turn, claimed it from them. The pillar became a cradle where I could draw new souls into the world. Pillars? Pillar. One of pillars. Uh, where is the birthing bell located? The birthing bell lies deep in the great forest of the Deerwood at the borders of Glandfoth and the land surrounding it. Barely a town, not one... Barely a town, not one you would find on any map. But it held an important place for those there, even if we were far from the beaty, beaten track. Small families tied like a knot, joined at the wrist and mind, and thought all were welcomed. All had purpose. In your memory, were you helping a woman given birth? Yes. Yet, I believe you only saw a small part of the birthing ritual. It is not all in a moment, nor in a day. It is a journey of many years between the child, the mother, and I. There was much I could do to aid the mother. Some sought the physical comforts of ritual to steady their thoughts, even Audra from the bell. Others would seek advice, hmm, words of counsel for the days ahead. I was able to provide droughts, tinctures, and a reading of the child's spirit, all to strengthen the mother. Telling of the child's spirit. Many would come seeking their child's future, or a reading into the child's past, the lives its soul is said to have lived. There's a slow chill, and for a moment it seems as if she's going to fade away from your vision. Such things are not mine to see. I meant no offense. Oddly enough, it feels like she's not speaking to you. It feels like she's speaking to an audience. Okay. You're frightened. Something about the Watcher. As the thought of Watchers crosses your mind, you feel a sharp pain, stabbing, and then and the sudden burn of lashes across your back and shoulder. And then it is gone. And you feel the grieving mother before you, silent, almost fearful, wary. I was something else. But because the title Watcher was cast on me, the word carried a weight I had neither earned nor deserved. The world seems filled with such titles. They distract, I think, from the actions of the person, from their strengths. Why did you believe you are a Watcher? The world has many corners, and in some corners the name Watcher is... More no. It is an easier title than others, and at times it is easier to wear. Placing a title upon what is unknown can dispel the fear of it, and I did not fight it. I even believed it true, though I knew little of the ways of Watchers. It even granted me strength. I was able to see the thoughts of others, shape them, and help guide souls. Watcher seemed enough. And the name seemed to matter little in the light of one's acts. But they came to you to read their child's souls. What did you tell them? I drew upon the present. I felt the soul of the mother before me and used that to tell the child's path, to give it a voice. If only the thoughts of the mother and the emotions that lie beneath were mine to impart. I did, and so I used that as the telling of their child's future. 
And what if it turned out to be untrue? Futures fulfilled by one's own spirit are as strong as anything seen by another's eyes. And if one draws from the emotion of the mother, it matters only when harm is done. And their lives I knew well. I could weave their lives, their thoughts over time, to the mother, to the child. And once the child had been born, was sheltered, I could relax the threads of thought until the child could stand on its own. So you, so you shaped their thoughts and made the readings true. This is my calling, to show them the life I see before them, and even greater, make them believe it. 